Welcome to Heart of Poland with... Paul Webster from Social Wi-Fi. And guys, I've got to tell you, I think it's going to be a very interesting interview. Paul, welcome uh, to Heart of Poland. Now, we're not strangers to each other. In fact, we happen to know each other, but you are, of course, one of the head honchos of Social Wi-Fi, and we're going to talk about that company today. Are you excited to be on Heart of Poland? Indeed. I was excited to be speaking with you, Paddy. <laughs> uh, listen, we have talked a little bit about what we're going to do today, and we discussed about doing something maybe about things you love about Poland and maybe the things that you don't love quite so much, maybe the things you don't like, maybe even some things you loathe. Uh, I know you've got a few things that you wanted to say about Poland. This is, of course, the whole point of our program is to talk about this. And you've got this amazing perspective because, like me, you've come to Poland, you've fallen in love with Poland, uh, you've immersed yourself in the culture, you've lived here for a while, and you've now got a perspective on the country for better or worse. So you accept the challenge, Paul? Yes, I'm a bit fearful of the backlash if I'm going to talk negatives, but let's see how we go. Let's go. So what's the first thing you want to talk about? Um, first thing I want to talk about Poland is I really don't like the agenda. I find it very difficult to, to deal with government offices, exactly. Going and getting things stamped, that's not that's not so fun. But you, if we're at the point of being, being a foreigner in Poland or a, a person running a business in Poland? I think, I think generally both. I think, I think if you speak to Polish people as well, they'll have the same perspective on, on their experiences with, with it. You know, coming, you know, personally, coming from the UK where everything's digitized and then you have to actually go to an office with a piece of paper and get it stamped and it's got to be signed in non-black ink. It's just really difficult. Is it the time thing because it just seems to take longer or is, is the stamping itself what, it, what one thing if you had to pick out all of them? I'd say the whole process. I think the fact that you can't really do it online though it is, though it is changing and it, you know, more things are moving online right now but it just feels like there's too much of that, that kind of stuff. Even the online stuff is really out of date. I mean, it probably irks you a lot more than it does me because you see all these things online and you specialise in those things. Yeah, especially with what I do, you know, working on user experience you think uh, well these processes could be a bit easier but it, it does bother me but you know i'm not gonna it's not the end of the world it's not gonna drive me away from poland but it's one of them things that you look at and think really should be looked at let's move on paul what next something you like or something you loathe mm, love the weather okay i think the re weather is really good in poland Maybe that's just the Brit in me speaking where the weather all year round is a constant five degrees, rainy, bit drizzly. In Poland you come and there's, a, there's proper seasons. So the summer is like 30 degrees most days uh, and the winter is like really cold, snow, maybe not this year, climate change and everything like that. But I think we have proper climates here in Poland. Does it not annoy you the, um, I don't know, it's not a uh, generalization let's say about the UK when, when it's raining in Poland people go, oh, some British rain for you today, Paul. Yeah, I get that a lot. Um, what I find quite funny in Poland is, fine with snow, you can have six feet of snow and everyone's fine. Bit of rain, it's like the end of the world. You know, you don't know how deep the potholes are in, in, in some of the roads. Um, but whilst I do love the weather, I hate the thunderstorms. So I'm terrified of thunderstorms. So a little confession there from me. And in the summer, there's way too many and I get a bit nervous and a bit anxious. And I'm a bit nervous to be around when there's, there's storms around. Uh, interesting, I'd never guess that. Okay, next thing, Paul. Um, let's go with, I love the, cult, the, the, the shopping and the cosmopolitan culture, especially in Warsaw. Um, you know, there's, the, the shops are all, always busy, people are always eating out in cafes. Um, and, you know, you compare the high street in, in Poland, certainly in Warsaw, I'm in my Warsaw bubble here where everything's very nice. <laughs> and I know that not every city in Poland is like this. But um, I love that cosmopolitan nature um, that there is in, in Warsaw. Though the Sunday trading really gets on my nerves. So this year is the first year in which there's almost no Sunday trading days. Yeah. It's just, from, for, from my opinion, I, 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 think it's an, I think it's an absolute disaster. I mean, you, you just restrict the choice that people can have on what they want to do. You're restricting people from earning money. Um, you know, businesses, you know pe businesses are closing. I think it was 9,000 in December alone closed because they're, they're struggling to compete with There is, of course, a counter-argument, which is the, the main reason that the Solidarity, for example, trade union have, uh, have been behind this uh, and been proponents of this, that, of course, people are forced to work on Sundays. It may be the case. However, f 
in, in my opinion, I think people should have you know more of a choice. When when I was you know when I was growing up, I used to I needed to work on Sundays because I was a student during the week, and I had to work on weekends to make money to pay the rent and, and things like that. So you're limiting so many people that want to work and they physically can't. That's going to impact their lives negatively. You would pre presume. Um, so for me, it's, it's it's a big you know it's a big bugbear. Do you agree with Paul? Let us know in the comments if you agree with the things that he likes and the things he doesn't like, and maybe even the things he loathes. Of course, you can check us out in the comments and share this with anyone who you think might want to comment on what Paul's talking about. I'm loving it so far, Paul. Let's go with something else. The foreign media in Poland really frustrate me. The way they report Poland, you'd think it's some horrible dictatorship that is. You know, it's the biggest problem in the European Union. The things they're doing are horrible. It's a disaster. And maybe some of the things aren't great, but that's all you seem to hear is, is, is this negativity about Poland, about the politics. Um, and, and I don't like that, um, you know, because I think Poland has a, a lot of great stuff to, to off offer. Maybe I'm not talking about it much in this video, but there's, there's a lot of fantastic stuff about, about Poland and um, it, it very rarely get, gets covered. Um, but this also brings me on to my next thing that, that frustrates me, Polish Twitter. Yeah, you could look on some of, some of the media accounts, you look at the replies and it's just all toxic abuse from, from accounts with fake names and pictures. Is that, that... true of Twitter everywhere though? Yeah, but maybe I just notice it more because, because I'm here and I think the anonymity of, of the people doing it is, is more prevalent in Poland. But, um, you know, I think if you're going to have an opinion, you should put, put your, your face to it and, um, you know, stand up and be counted in that regard. Well, uh, you can probably find Paul Webster on Twitter by just looking for Paul Webster. <laughs> what, what's your, I hope not. What's your handle? Uh, Warsaw White. Warsaw, Warsaw? Warsaw White. White. Okay, so that's where you can find Paul if you want to comment on everything he's talked about. And you can also see us on Twitter on The First News, the premium source for English language news about Poland. And of course, you can find lots of opinions about the country as well. Let's move on then, Paul. Oh, I'm starting to, I'm starting to struggle now with, with things. I've done the, the key things off the top of my head and I'm trying to remember what Something was a bit lower Something about the Polish language, list. if I remember rightly. That was right, yeah. So, um, foreigners in Poland that don't even try to learn the language, they really, they really frustrate me. But also... Do you know a lot of them? Like, you meet yeah. foreign people? So, so I, I try not to, um, not to socialise with too many foreigners um, in, in Poland because if I wanted to do that, I could have just stayed in, stayed in England. Um, I think you learn a lot more about the culture and, and you, know, you meet a, lo a lot of nice po Polish people by um, socialising with them and then that develops your language skills Anyway, I know, you know, I'm far from perfect in Polish, but I'm trying and I'm getting better. And it does just frustrate me when I see um, a, lot, a lot of foreigners not even making, making the effort. Um, it, it is a difficult language, but why, it's... Why do they not try? I think it's the, um, the percent, too many people tell them it's a difficult language. So why bother learning it? Um, because everyone in Poland speaks English anyway, which may be the case, but you're in another country. You should be respectful of, of where you are and being able to speak and communicate in that language is a big part of that for me. And so where are you on your journey? Because I know you put a lot of effort into your Polish language. So how long has it taken you to get to where you are? And are you, are you happy? Are you you're still working on it? Yeah, so always working on it. You know, I go through phases. I'll like work really intensively for two weeks and then for about two months, I'll just go off, go off the boil. Um, but I'm like, towards the end of the, 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 the B1 course. I'm in a position where I'm probably ready to take, to take the exam and, and see how I go with that. Initially, like as you work through the language, the beginning's the easiest, and you learn the most. And then you're thinking, "Oh, this is great! I'm going to be fluent in no time." And then you get a bit deeper into it, and you're like, "Oh my god, I'm never, I'm never going to learn this." As you learn some more complex stuff. Um, but for all those people who who get to that point and think, "I can't do this. This is way too complicated. These cases and genitives and all that kind of stuff," you're saying there is a bit of hope. You can get over that hump. Yeah, my experience has been that there have been things I just couldn't get my head around. And then one day you'll wake up and it just falls into place. You, you, you see an example or you hear something or you're just thinking, you go, oh, wow, all of a sudden it just falls into place and then you can move on to, move on to something else. Um, but it, it's, you've, you've got to practice and you've got to work hard. And you know, I, I'm guilty of being lazy because everyone in the office speaks English. Um, so I don't practice as often as I should. Um, but that said, you know, Polish people will also 
ask you, you know, why are you bothering to learn Polish? It's, you know, <laughs> it's, 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 really, it's a really difficult language. We, we all speak English, don't bother. So they don't make it easy for you either by not facilitating it. But, um, but yeah, so getting back to where I started, it does bother me when I, when I see foreigners go into a hairdresser or a restaurant and they will just start the conversation in English, assuming that the person is going to speak English back to them. I just find that a bit, a bit rude. Uh, there's uh, basically everything you said about the Polish language I completely agree with. Uh, what other things have you done that have helped you get over that hump? What other things can you tell our foreign viewers? Uh, In terms of the language? Yeah. Um, ask questions. Make notes of the things that you don't understand. Um, so every day I'll just in, in my notebook if I see um, a new a, a new verb that I'm not familiar with or just a, a a word within a sentence I'll make a note of it and I'll go back to it and just research it a bit later um, I would encourage people not to ask polls about the grammar <laughs> because they don't they don't know how to explain their own grammar it's just natural it comes naturally to them so I think I think when you're learning the grammar, it's best to ask another foreigner that's already learned it because they can give you a bit more structure. It's like uh, one of the girls in our office is, is learning English and she asks me about some of our grammar rules and I'm like, uh, no, I don't, I, I don't know. I can't explain that to you because it, it, it's natural. So don't ask polls about their grammar, um, but ask them, you know, ask them about the little nuances that you may be unfamiliar with, any new words and things like that. Paul's dropping some serious truth bombs about the Polish language here and he said quite a lot of interesting things about the Polish country. Again, you can comment on this uh, episode wherever you find it and send it on to anyone who you think might be interested in Paul's views. Paul, are there any other things that we've left off your list of liking and loathing? I love the history of Poland. I think it's a really fascinating history. Um, mostly, um, you know, the, the, the back end of um, the last uh, millennia, you know, 1600 onwards. I think it's really, really interesting. Um, you know, what Poland's gone through over the last 100 years is, you know, it, it's really, really difficult. And I think for, for me, part of the beauty of Poland is comparing where it is right now compared to how things were 70 years ago at the end, end of the war. I think it's, um, you know, where we're sat now, I don't know if this would have existed, but I know the whole area around us was just destroyed and, and was rubble and to see Warsaw as it is today, um, I think adds to the beauty. Would you ever go back to the UK, Paul? Are you here in Poland for good? I've got no intention to go back to the UK. Paul, I'll ask you a difficult question, a uh, theoretical question, which I've received in my time. War breaks out between Poland and the UK. Who do you fight for? Oh, come on. Um, let's just hope it doesn't happen. Weaseled his way out very effectively. <laughs> <laughs> Favourite place in Poland? Uh, it's got to be Warsaw. I, I, just generally everything about the city is great, there's so much to do. Favourite Polish food? Oh, uh, pierogi. With? Kaczka, duck. Oh, okay, quite controversial. We won't go any further there for risk of irritating. And they've got to be fried. Fried? Yeah. OMG, I'm not sure, this is like a totally unorthodox uh, approach. Fried. Am I just going to get more Twitter abuse now? Yeah, this is the thing that will get you the most Twitter abuse, which you can find Paul at, um, uh, Web, what was it again? Web? Warsaw White. Warsaw White. <laughs> I'm a, Le I'm a Leeds United fan, so we're the Whites and I'm the Warsaw White. Ah, well, we won't hold that against you. Uh, <laughs> it's just fun. Right, let's talk about social Wi-Fi for a bit then. Mm -hmm. um, can you give me the elevator pitch in, in a half a minute or a minute? Uh, I can try. Um, so what we do is we sell um, a, um, a, a Wi-Fi software into hospitality, so hotels and restaurants, and that helps these businesses uh, know who their customers are. Um, you know, some capture information about them, like the name, the email address, the date of birth. Um, and that gives the business the opportunity to um, encourage them to come back, visit them more often, spend more money with them. <clears throat> and there are a lot of other elements as well. Like, so we'll gather online reviews for, for, our, for our customers automatically, which is, you know, critical in, in the sectors that, that we sell into. You're like a gatekeeper for for this experience with the customers. Yeah, so you know, any business, they have two goals. You know, they, want, they need people coming back and spending money more often and they need new customers all the time. So we're looking at those two things. We can encourage people to come back by, you know, communicating with them, giving them reasons to come back. And we can get new people into the businesses by gathering them online reviews. Paul, how have you changed as a person? You've been in uh, Poland, you've been working for social Wi-Fi a couple of years, am I right? Uh -huh. Yeah, just over two years. How have you changed as a person? How has Polish business changed you? 
it's an interesting thing with how I've changed personally, just taking the business aside for a moment. Um, I generally find that I'm a bit calmer and a bit more chilled out here because I think it's the language, um, the fact that I don't understand the language so well, I don't get quite as involved in controversial discussions like politics. I don't read the, the, the news quite as much. So I, I, I keep myself to myself more. I don't listen in on conversations on the bus that might otherwise trigger me um, <laughs> in, in, in the UK. So I find I'm generally a bit more relaxed and a bit calmer ab about everything. And then that has a knock-on effect to other aspects of, of my life as well. I think when it comes to business, you know, Poland isn't, isn't the easiest place to, to 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 run a business in in my opinion so i probably learned to be a bit more a bit more patient and a bit you know got, got to work a bit harder and be a bit more driven to get to get to where you want to be um, and the nicest change that um, for me that we've made at the business over the last two years is switching our focus to international and changing the culture within the business as well because I think um, if people are going to come to Poland for the first time they'll probably notice a difference in attitudes towards service and we had to make that culture change in the business to get people more service orientated. You know, in America, customer is king. They have that, you know, that attitude. And that's what we've really strived to, to get towards. And, and that's been the nicest change um, for me personally, getting other people there. But the fact that the, there's, you know, a, a lot of other people at the business with the same values now um, is really nice. Okay, lovely. Where can we find social Wi-Fi? I mean, clearly Googling is probably a good start, but other services are available. If you want to skip Google, you can just go straight to socialwifi.com and you, you can check out everything that we do right there. And you're available online for people to contact you directly about your views. Indeed, yes. <laughs> Send me your Twitter feedback. <laughs> Paul Webster from Social Wi-Fi, thank you very much. I've really enjoyed talking to you about the things you love and like about Poland, uh, and I identify with many of the things you've said. I'm just too scared to say them. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, then make sure you check out some of the other fascinating conversations with fascinating people leading fascinating lives like Paul and the great team at Social Wi-Fi. And you can find us on The First News. Wherever you find us, make sure you share us with other people who share our passion for discovering the impossible mission of finding a heart opponent. I'll see you again for another episode of Heart Opponent. <laughs> <laughs>